Imagine throwing a handful of corn chips in your mouth. Now imagine, not only enjoying the great taste and receiving excellent nutrition, but that you're vaccinating yourself against a deadly HIV virus. You're imagining the future of medicine, edible vaccines. Soon, they may revolutionize healthcare by providing inexpensive, easy to use and widely available vaccinations. They look good on paper, but they are put to the test. There are pros, cons, and all sorts of aspects to cover on edible vaccines. In this talk, I will talk briefly about how edible vaccines are created. Afterwards, I'll cover the pros and cons of this revolutionary idea. To create edible vaccines, DNA, which creates antigens, is inserted into the DNA string of a plant. Within the plant, all of the DNA will include one part, which contains and grows these antigens. So far, hepatitis B and cholera are the only diseases which edible vaccines have been created for. Approximately one third of the world currently has hepatitis B. A solution like this has completely revolutionized the world. Both are great hopes, their cons, to go along with the pros. Edible vaccines contain improvements to vaccines, as well as improvements to quantities and distribution of vaccines. Firstly and most importantly, edible vaccines use antigens instead of pathogens to trigger antibody creating cells. This means that instead of using a part of the real disease, the plants create antigens which are duplicates of pathogens but entirely harmless. As oral vaccines are passed through the throat or mouth, they also trigger different cells to create antibodies. Instead of the common B and T cells creating antibodies, oral vaccines would trigger the mucosal glands to create antibodies. The mucosal glands, also known as the mucus in your throat, are located in your stomach, throat, and digestive tract. M cells, which are the cells in the mucosal glands, are more likely to produce antigens all over the body, instead of more like localized production of antibodies. This way, the pathogens are more likely to be stopped faster while entering the more common passage for pathogens, the nasal passage in throat. Also, edible vaccines are much cheaper than injections. They cost millions of dollars less. They require no refrigeration for heat stability. They don't require the purchase of needles. Neither do they require professional healthcare workers to give them to you. Lastly, they can be mass produced. Plants can be easily reproduced hundreds of thousands of times. For example, bananas could provide the entire world from immunity of hepatitis B in one 50-acre property. To go along with these pros, there are also some concerns with the vaccines. For starters, wildlife may be affected by plants and the hepatitis B vaccines. The wildlife may not react well with the plants they are ingesting. The breeds may carry seeds, which in turn cross-pollinate with other plants. Other people who are allergic may inadvertently eat some of the cross-pollinated fruits and result in an allergic reaction. The most important issue with edible vaccines are doses. It is extremely difficult to predict the amount of antigens that will be produced in a plant. The doses crea created depend on the plant's size, ripeness, and protein content. Once this seemingly impossible task has been overcome, the dose must match with the consumer's weight, body, age, and health size. If the antigen content is too low, then not enough antibodies may be created. While digesting too many antigens, the body will form immunity to it. Overall, there are many aspects of edible vaccines to cover. They are a major step towards world health, but first, they must pass many moral and physical tests to succeed.